Hey there, I'm Nick from Sundance and I'm on the Jeannot NC1095 Fly. And as a part of our 2020 virtual boat show series, we're gonna take a detailed look at this boat inside and out, do some performance testing later and run it. And we're gonna take a look from stem to stern. So my three favorite things, number one, it has a fly bridge. So it's like the 1095, but the 1095 Fly has a fly bridge which on a day like today, there's nowhere else I'd rather be running the boat than the flybridge. It's absolutely beautiful. The 1095 has outboard power, which is very quiet, very smooth, very efficient. They're actually running right now, and you can barely hear the motors. I can hear the road noise around us, I can hear other boats around us, I can hear people, but I can barely hear those motors, and they're very smooth. I can't feel them running at all. Um, and then my third favorite thing about the boat is the layout. So it it's a three stateroom, 35 foot boat. Three staterooms, that's unique. And it has, the head is a dry head, so it has a separate shower stall. So three staterooms and a dry head. So it's just an amazing layout and there's good storage in the boat too. All the way forward, the V berth, that's gonna be the largest stateroom. And then both to port and starboard, we have the second and third staterooms. And then to port, we have the head, which is very spacious. And then up here, it's laid out very nicely. Uh, we have excellent, excellent visibility, a lot of natural light coming in. This dinette converts to a berth. We have a nice well-appointed galley here, fridge. There's also a second fridge, just like this one, an additional fridge down in the starboard side uh, stateroom. And overhead storage in the galley, overhead storage up front, and a pilot house door. This is really nice. So I can get in and out really, really easily. And nice wide side decks, easy access to the bow and easy access to lines and fenders. Very good helm stations. Both the lower helm and the upper helm are very, very nicely appointed. Garmin Electronics, this particular boat has radar uh, as well as a lot of other things, diesel furnace, bow thruster, a lot of other things that we'll go into in the more in-depth walkthrough. So if you're interested in taking a more in-depth look at the boat, uh, this is gonna be a long video, gonna go through a lot of stuff, but if this is a boat that, that you're interested in, I think you'll enjoy it. So thanks for checking it out. So starting in the back of the 1095 Fly, we have two 300 horsepower Yamahas. Cockpit enclosure, it is a factory option. This does come from the factory. So if you're interested in a cockpit enclosure like this, it may or may not be on the equipment list on a particular unit in inventory. This one has it. It attaches to the cockpit overhang, which is a separate option up top there. And Jeannot does a really nice job with this canvas. It gives you excellent visibility and it closes up this space to make it kind of an extension of your living space. And as we move through the boat, you'll see the wide doorway from the cockpit into the uh, interior of the boat, which with that open just makes the cockpit kind of feel like an extension of that space. So I'm gonna take the canvas off real quick so we can take a look at the cockpit without the enclosure on. Took me a couple minutes, but it's really easy. This piece can stay in place. This is uh, the cockpit overhang. Now I'm gonna show how this seat works, how it slides back and forth to make room for the motors to trim up while maximizing cockpit space. So there's a spring-loaded barrel bolt here and here, which I've unlocked, I've released those. And then this corner seat opens up like that. And once you've done that, see back here, now we have a lot of room to trim the motors up. And basically what that accomplishes, given the same overall length of the boat, it maximizes the cockpit space. Because most of the time when you're using the boat, the motors are gonna be in the down position. When you've left the boat, when you've docked it, you're gonna wanna trim those up to get them out of the water so they don't grow algae on them. When you've lowered the motors back into the down position, we can slide the cockpit seat back and lock it into place with these barrel bolts and return this seat. Ready to go buddy. This ladder, you can remove this thumb screw 
And now we have access to this large storage locker. So I'm down, kind of halfway down in the storage area under the cockpit. And to port and starboard, we have the fuel tanks. And access to the senders on the top of the tanks through these screw type access holes. So you can see the aluminum tank there and the sender. And then down here, we have access to the batteries right here. More access to the fuel tanks on both sides. There's a fuel filter right here and fuel lines coming off that. And then further aft, we have a lazarette. Uh, I can see the, the actual transom of the boat back there and the Wavasto diesel furnace is back here. And there's a bilge pump back there. We have the diesel tank because this is a gas boat. So the diesel tank is for the uh, diesel furnace. We have the fill line for the diesel tank and the uh, supply line for the furnace for the diesel tank. So moving from the cockpit into the salon, we have these nice wide doors, which will lock in the open position. So when you're underway, you can have these open and they won't slide back and forth. To the starboard side, we have the galley, which is very well appointed. We have storage up top. We have the sink here and the stove here. It's a propane stove. It's nice being able to cover all this up so you can use this as countertop space if you're not using the sink or the stove. Here we have a mount for a TV, which uh, is not installed. You can imagine what it will look like with the TV there. We have a microwave down below and one of two refrigerators on the boat right here. We have another refrigerator down below in one of the cabins that we'll take a look at in a minute. Lots of storage. And then inside this panel here, we have the main battery switches. So the two switches on the left there are the house batteries and the two switches on the right are the engine batteries. And this is the breaker for the windlass. The boat has a lot of cup holders. There's one here, there's two right here. There's two on the table here. The table, well, it does a lot actually. So it can, it, it lowers to make this into a berth, which I'll do in just a minute. And this leaf comes up to make the table larger. And there's a support for it that I just pulled out underneath to keep it nice and solid. And then you can lower it to change the direction of this seat. So you've got a two person forward facing seat right here. Nice access to the sliding window. There's a lot of opening windows and hatches on the boat for ventilation. I'm gonna go ahead and convert this to the berth configuration. So there's two locking collars on the table base here. And before we drop the table, there's a stainless steel bar that goes here to support it, which we have stored down in this really spacious storage compartment. Uh, well, we have the optional carpet kit in this boat and you can see it's easy to get to. There's a cutout in the carpet, so you don't have to remove the whole carpet. You can just pull one snap and then you have a handle to get into the storage here. So to get this in here, we just lift the seat part of the way up like that. And then the stainless bar drops into this molded fiberglass insets. And then we can unlock the collars. It's assisted, so it's easy to get back up. And when you push it down, you just nice and straight and then keep a little bit of weight on the top and lock these down and we're ready to put the cushion on top. So there's quite a bit of room. I'm about 5'9". I don't have my feet up on it because I don't want to get it dirty. It's definitely over six feet. I have, I don't know, probably four inches of room at each end. So there's room for two adults there. And then again, to go back to the dining configuration, very easy, little bit of help. Pull this out. You could actually stash these cushions down below there too.
This boat has the diesel furnace installed in, in lieu of air conditioning. Um, and if, if it had air conditioning, there would be an air conditioner installed in here, which would take up part of this space. We don't order them with AC. We order them with the diesel furnace instead. In the Northwest, we have so few days of the year that really uh, require air conditioning. And there's so much ventilation, so many opening windows in this boat. Uh, that we find it, it's really not something that most people want uh, or need in these. The diesel furnace, on the other hand, puts out a lot of heat, is really nice to have in the winter time, and it makes it a true four season Northwest boat. So here we have more storage and built-in storage for wine bottles, and up here, more overhead storage. The helm of the 1095, uh, the lower helm, I should say, because this is the Flybridge model, is very well appointed and it has this side door access. Locks in the open position, so when you're underway, it won't move around on you. And it gives you great ventilation and access to this cleat right here and easy access to the starboard side side deck. And then we have a Garmin multifunction display with chart plotter, depth sounder, fish finder, and then you can add quite a bit to it. You could add radar. You can integrate a Garmin autopilot into this system. We have the bow thruster controls here, trim tabs. These switches control a number of different things. Lights, power, windshield wipers, horn. We have the Yamaha engine controls here and the Yamaha display. When the engines are running, this will give us all of the critical engine information. And we have a 12 volt outlet here, two USB plugs there. I'm gonna fire up the outboards. So to do that, we just turn this Yamaha key here. I've turned the engine batteries on back on that panel in the galley on the starboard side, just when you enter. So keys on and the push button start. Port one's on, starboard one's on. You almost can't hear them running, um, which a lot of people like that about the outboards uh, versus inboards. With inboards, they're generally under the cockpit floor. You, you get some level of sound and vibration that resonates through the boat. Normally not a lot. These are noticeably quieter. Now they're off. All right, we're down below and this is the V-Birth, the forward stateroom. Uh, you can see there's quite a bit of room. Let me show you. The berth pulls out here and then there's this filler cushion which adds, I don't know, maybe eight inches. So there's quite a bit of room in the bed. And we have overhead storage lockers on both sides. These nice hull windows, privacy curtains all around. Storage over here on the starboard side. We have a power outlet over here. And lots of storage under here. So it's hinged and assisted by those gas shocks so you don't have to hold it up. And there's a lot of natural light all throughout the cabins of this boat, but this, this stateroom in particular we have these privacy shades. This panel, this glass panel is glued in place, but this one is a hatch that opens for more ventilation. And then we have a porthole over here that opens for ventilation. On the port side, aft of the head, we have this full length mirror. It actually makes the space feel a little bigger. So this would be the medium sized of the three staterooms. I can sit up on the berth. We have a full closing door. You can stand up inside the doorway. We have some storage here, large hull window, some storage over there, plenty of room. This one's wider though, this one's quite a bit wider. So this is truly pretty comfortable for two adults in here. So standing in the port side stateroom, there's, there's enough room to stand in here. I can close the door. We have this nice skylight privacy curtain with these elastic loops if you choose to close that. I'm in the starboard side stateroom down below where we have that second fridge. We have that optional second fridge there. More storage down here. This is a three stateroom, 35 foot boat, which is really unique. And this is the smaller of the three staterooms, but I'm gonna go ahead and stretch out down here. Okay, I've put my feet against the bulkhead at the end and I have quite a bit of headroom up here. So it's cozy for two people. And we have a, a large hull window on the starboard side there, as well as an opening hatch. Okay, I'm laying down in the starboard side stateroom in the berth. The reason we're down here is I wanna show you what is behind this panel here. So this comes out and we have a light right there. We have a hot water heater there. We have a domestic water pump 
we have the battery charger and then we have access to some of the electrical wiring and the plumbing on the boat. Okay, so now I'm inside this little equipment room um, and it's really not bad. I mean, there's, there's, this is not a part of the boat that you're gonna spend much time in at all, if ever. Um, but for the occasional maintenance item or if you need to get in here for some reason, it's, it's really not that bad. And for most stuff, you wouldn't need to get all the way in here like I am. Um, you can access it from the berth in the stateroom. Okay, we're in the head of the 1095. It's a dry head, with a, which means it has a separate shower stall. So I'm gonna step into there. So it has a, a real door, and it's there's a lot of room in here. It has this seat that folds down from the side. It has a window. For obvious reasons, you're gonna want this privacy curtain on most of the time. There's a small window here, and in fact, there's a there's a there's basically a skylight up here with this nice little privacy curtain. You can remove if you choose to. So we have a nice sink, a lot of counter space, the head, and again, more natural light, more visibility, nice hull window with privacy curtain and an opening hatch. It's on a friction hinge, so it'll hold itself open. A little bit of storage up here. Now we're gonna talk about the side decks and go up to the bow of the 1095 Fly. First thing you'll notice here is we have this storage locker, which is actually for the propane tank, for the propane stove in the galley. And then we have a starboard side boarding door, which I can tell you is the perfect height for the docks at Roach Harbor, which are a little higher than they are here. Although it's still convenient, even with the docks a little bit lower. And we have, let's see, we have a water fill, the waste tank pump out, and then here we have the side door that goes to the helm. You have access to this cleat here, in addition to the side door, one of the nice features of this boat is the, the width of the side deck and the depth of the side deck. So they accomplish this extra wide, extra deep side deck by offsetting the cabin a little bit. So the cabin is actually shifted over to port a little bit. It doesn't cause the boat to list. They've engineered it so that it's balanced. So that, that is a really great safety feature, especially if you have um, kids on board or pets on board. This is a nice, secure way for them to access the bow from the cockpit or from the interior. On the bow, we have this giant sun pad. We can pull these cushions out of the middle, which have three Velcro tabs down here. So there's one, and then this one has two snaps. So with those removed, this is the, uh, the opening hatch in the forward stateroom, and this is a skylight in the forward stateroom. Both of them have sunshades, so you can close them off for privacy from inside the stateroom, or you can have the cushions on them, which is of course gonna block them. But with the cushions off, you have a lot of natural light entering that stateroom, and this one opens for ventilation. And then this boat has the chase lounge option, which is real simple to set up. You just lift that backrest and put that leg into position. And then forward, there's a storage locker. You could fit probably three or four fenders in there, lines, probably an inflatable kayak or stand-up paddleboard, water toys. All the way forward, we have this boarding ladder. If you beach the boat, you can deploy this ladder. And it gets you down pretty much all the way to the water. If you're on the beach, it's gonna be on the beach. And then here we have the windlass and access to the uh, chain locker, remote control for the windlass. This is the safety line. Well, so if you're in rough water, or really if you're cruising, you want this engaged. Just in case you have a malfunction with the windlass, that'll keep the anchor from deploying unintentionally. We're on the flybridge of the NC 1095 Fly, and we're in downtown Portland on the Willamette River. I'm gonna show you what we have at the helm station and give you a tour of the flybridge. The engines are running. They're in neutral at both stations, so there's a station selector button right here. I can press that and it will engage this control station. So now I have control of the boat up here. The steering wheel will control the boat from either station at any time. It's independent from the Yamaha stuff. So in addition to that, we have a Garmin display. I've got the chart plotter up. Uh, it's linked to the Garmin down below. And we have the Yamaha display, which is right now the screen showing engine RPMs, but it will show fuel economy, a lot of stuff. It'll give you battery voltage, oil pressure, all of the engine information. 
uh, as well as fuel levels. And then over here we have the trim tab controls, bow thruster control, windlass control, horn, lights. And the seat has this flip up bolster to elevate your seating position a little bit. It's also on a sliding base. All right, on the starboard side of the flybridge, we have this nice big sun pad. In fact, all of these nice sun pads, uh, but there's more to it than just that. So first of all, this is also a table right here. So to change this to the table configuration, we just take this cushion off and then we have this leg that goes into the base and the table goes on top. This pops up and this turns into a seat here. So we have nice seating around the table, some cup holders up front, some cup holders over here. And then back here, we have this nice low profile radar mast. Keeps the radar down low, which will help with bridge clearance some of the time. To get down here onto the Willamette to downtown Portland, we had to go under a few bridges, the steel bridge being the lowest. Sometimes having the radar lower will make the difference between having to have a bridge lift or not. We have the hatch to get back down into the cockpit. And it's got non-skid on the top so that when we close it, you can, you can stand up here, it's, it's very solid. And over here we have a digital TV antenna that comes from the factory. Well, it did on this boat, it's from the factory uh, pre-wired. Down below there's a TV mount, TV base on the galley countertop. This is run to that. Okay, here we are, we're out on the Willamette River on the 1095 fly, and we're gonna do some performance testing. Um, we are in gear, just idling right now. So about 600 RPMs shows on the tack, that's idle. I'll bump it up here a little bit. All right, here we are doing uh, a real slow cruise. We're doing about nine, eight and a half, nine miles an hour. Okay, 2200 RPMs, we're doing just under 10 miles an hour. So wide open throttle on these motors is going to be between 50, around 58 or 5,900 RPMs. All right, so I'll go ahead and open it up. The boat has very little bow rise when it gets on plane. We're going over the wake of another boat right now. There we go. So you maintain excellent visibility throughout that whole process. And then it runs very flat on plan. So this is wide open throttle. We got about 57, 5,800 RPMs. The boat's going 41.6 miles per hour. I'm gonna back the speed off to kind of a high cruise. That's the wake from the tug that we just passed. Let's see what 5,000 RPMs looks like or feels like. There we go, there's 5,000 RPMs, and we're doing 35 and a half miles per hour. The, the attitude of the boat is just right. You've got really good visibility. The bow's not high, it runs real level, and it's smooth and it's really quiet. You can have a conversation in here at pretty much a normal conversation volume, and it's just very quiet, very smooth. All right, I'm gonna do some turns. The boat's very responsive. I was dodging some debris in the water earlier and it just, it, it responds immediately. Very nice. We're coming up on the confluence of the Willamette and Columbia Rivers. We're on the Willamette and this is the Columbia right ahead of us. So we're gonna turn east and go towards, uh, towards Sundance. Okay, I'm gonna make the turn onto the Columbia. And the current is moving pretty fast. So we've lost a couple miles an hour. We're now doing 33 over the ground. We're going faster than that through the water, but we're going into the current. So it's indicated a little bit, a little bit slower speed. Okay, so we're gonna switch up to the flybridge now. So to do that, I'm just gonna slow the boat down. We have to be in neutral to switch stations. There's idle, there's neutral. And now we can go up to the flybridge and take control at that home station. So 
we're gonna run the boat from the flybridge a little bit and see what the ride is like up here, see what the wind is like, and see how it feels at some different cruise speeds. This is a nice kind of low speed cruise. It's indicating nine miles an hour, but that's our ground speed. And we're going into the current, and I know there's a significant current today. There's a lot of spring runoff coming off the mountain up there, Mount Hood. So we're probably really going like 11-ish miles per hour through the water. So this is, a, this is a pretty good low speed cruise. This is a comfortable speed you could cruise at. You don't have to worry about your drinks falling over or food sliding off the table or in rough water this would be an appropriate speed. We'll speed it up a little bit. And there's also, at this speed, there's also very little wind. Uh, this Venturi in front of us, the windscreen, does a great job of deflecting the wind. We'll speed it up. So the boat, we're indicating about 14 miles an hour over the ground, and really we're on plane. Um, and that's a unique characteristic of the hull design of this boat. Jeannot designed this boat from scratch to have very little, very minimal bow rise when getting on plane and to get on plane at a lower speed, um, which is a benefit because you maintain good visibility and you can cruise at lower speeds if that's more appropriate for the conditions. And it's more economical and it's a, it's a more comfortable ride too. Okay, so we're indicating about 22 miles an hour over the ground, which is probably 23 or 24 through the water because of the current. And, and, and again, very little bow rise. This would be a comfortable speed to cruise at all day. Let's see how, let's see how it handles at this speed. Very nice. The steering is really responsive. It's really easy to spin the wheel. Try a little faster. Okay, now we're more at a kind of a medium to high speed cruise. We're back at 5,000 RPMs, which is about what we were doing when running the boat from the lower station and indicating 34 and a half miles per hour over the ground. So again, it's probably 36-ish uh, through the water. And we're very protected from the wind up here. You can see I've still got my hat on. Obviously, I'm getting, I'm experiencing the wind a little bit, but um, my hat's staying on. So this Venturi is doing a great job of protecting us from the wind. Yeah, just it feels like it's on rails. The boat leans into the turn just a little bit in the appropriate direction. It doesn't want to fall out of it. And it just carves through the water, very responsive. If you had to dodge some debris or uh, make an abrupt course correction, it just, it's easy. Let's try wide open throttle. probably about 42 through the water, maybe a little more even. The current is really moving today. You can see my hat is still on and uh, I don't feel like it's gonna blow off, which is really impressive. So we're really well protected from the wind. So this isn't a speed that you're gonna run at all day, but uh, it's, it's nice to know what the boat can do and it's very impressive. Thanks for taking the time to watch this detailed look at the Juno NC 1095 Fly and be sure to check back soon for more 2020 virtual boat show series brought to you by Sundance.